Yeah, continuing on this Nick Fuentes analysis. Um, because my show... All right. This isn't a show. It's pretty liberal use of the word show. But because it's totally unscripted and it's just me rambling, I always forget things, unfortunately. But it's just more efficient that way. Because I'm not going to... Especially somebody like Fuentes. Is he really, you know, like worth planning a show about? I mean, not really. But my general laziness is I don't like to do that. But um, I guess the narrative is the ADL came out with a hit piece on him. And so, like, because of that hit piece, he was banned. But I don't know. That just seems stupid. Like, do you think Twitter would care about an ADL hit piece? If there was any type of organization, then it would be... They knew it was coming down, so they put this out, I guess. I don't know. I don't. They've been putting out hit pieces on people for a long-ass time. And it seems like every time there's a banning, people try to make the connection to the ADL. So, like, the ADL does have some swing, but... I feel like this narrative that whoever the ADL mentions, you know, like uh, the head of that organization, I forget his name right now, but he passes a note to the Twitter chairman on who to ban and it happens, you know, like immediately, like the Godfather handing down orders or like the Pope handing out a papal bull. Uh, I just think that's fucking a stupid narrative that people have made up. I think the ADL does have a certain amount of power, but it's within the realm of leftist activists that are are pushing for voices like Fuentes or more extreme voices than, than him to be banned from platforms. I think Facebook, Twitter, their higher priority is running a successful business model, but also they want to avoid... You know, a lot of hate, a lot of outrage, a lot of uh, people that are angry. So, in for my view is they get pulled almost at least partially kicking and screaming to ban voices like Fuentes or even Holocaust deniers, which took a while. But um, people are just into this narrative that, you know, Jewish supremacists are dictating... Uh, who to ban, you know, Twitter likes Fuentes, but because the ADL is so powerful, they, you know, have no choice. I don't buy that bullshit. I don't think the ADL is nearly as powerful as these tech organizations. They're just kind of like a, they're, they're kind of like, uh, I don't know. They're the Karen that people placate or they give them lip service or, you know, they tolerate them. They want their endorsement. They don't want the ADL calling them out too hard, but it's a nonprofit. I mean, it's fucking shit compared to Twitter, Facebook, Apple, any of these big tech firms that have all the fucking money. The ADL goes begging for money like a politician or something. Yeah, they have some power, but it's like they're always whining. I don't feel like they have that much power to pull something like this. Um, but people are people are just into this narrative. They uh, they don't like the narrative that you know somebody like Fuentes. Um, it's not just. Uh, I guess they're into this narrative like, oh, he's a popular, patriotic American. And, you know, the usurpers, because they're threatened by his movement, had to usurp him and, um, what do you call it, undermine him or subvert him. Uh, whereas the real truth is there's a lot of fucking people that don't like the guy, think he's toxic, don't want anything to do with him. Um, the ADL isn't forcing people to hate the guy. They're not forcing CPAC to not associate with him. It's kind of like the same argument that... Um, you know, nobody really likes Israel. It's just uh, APAC, like, sends out their goons to force Congress people to support Israel. Uh, is As opposed to the reality, or what I believe the reality is, is that a lot of people support Israel. So they formed an organization called APAC. 
which uh, stands up to Israel and um, because they they perceive it to be a value in and of itself and they do perceive it to be America first. So again, they're getting cause and effect um, disorganized and uh, reversed in my mind. APAC exists because there's a lot of support in America for Israel. Um, it's not that APAC creates support for Israel through, uh, you know, slander and um, negative actions. Uh, my other point is what is being banned, although there's some negatives that go along with it. The biggest benefiters, the biggest benefactors are going to be disgruntled young white American men who won't come across them, be pulled into his toxic movement and, you know, change their avatars to frogs and be posting frog memes and uh, trying to disrupt Q&A sessions with, uh, I forget the all the people's names. That they do that to, but instead of doing useless fucking bullshit and his movement, you know what? Maybe they're gonna do things like go out on dates and settle down and have children. So I, I think it's unquestionably positive. Like, if you're in favor of white American men and you think they're getting the shaft in this country and you're worried about them then you would definitely be in favor of this banning because this is surely the most positive development for disgruntled, young, down-on-their-luck, white American men that I can remember in recent history. So, because my show sucks, I would have said this in the original video, but we had to do a second take, so we got to work with what we got, which is my limited ability to run a quote show. So anyway, I hope everyone will see Fuentes for what he is. And if there are any followers watching this, start partaking in more healthy activities rather than following him to Telegram, Telegram Gab, wherever they might go. Anyway, everybody have a great weekend.